Do you get confused about when to use these prepositions sometimes? It's understandable, especially for non-native speakers. Prepositions are often confusing, especially when we only use phrases from what we've heard or memorized from native speakers. This video gives you the functions of these prepositions. Prepositions of place, to be specific, and will also give you example sentences. This is the third part of our series in prepositions. In this video, we will use this box and this ball to illustrate each preposition for easier understanding. A preposition of place describes where something is located in connection to something else. In this case, two different things are always involved. A preposition of place also describes where something occurred or will occur, like on the table, at a corner, in mind, and more later in this video. There are 15 prepositions of place, but some of them are grouped for they express the same meaning. Just like our discussion on the prepositions of time, before going to the main objective, there are a few things that you need to remember. Each preposition of place will have example sentences. The sentences will contain underlined phrases called the prepositional phrases. The bolded words are the prepositions of place and the nouns, pronouns or noun phrases that come after them are the objects of those prepositions. Let's start with in. In describes enclosed places. For example, my wallet is in the bag. They are in the classroom. Meaning, my wallet is inside my bag. They are inside the classroom. Next, on. On describes surfaces or top of things. And the item should touch the surface of the other thing. If it does not, a different preposition is required. For example, I left the glass on the table. Meaning, the glass is on the surface of the table, and the glass is touching the surface of the table, and the glass should not float over the table. Another example, please leave the book on my desk, meaning the person should leave the book on the surface or top of the desk. Next, add. At describes specific locations or points. This often involves proper nouns. Again, often, meaning not always. There are times that we only talk about a specific corner of the room or area of a space, like center or sides, the right side, the left side, etc. For example, let's meet at Nature Park. The nature park here is a proper noun because the first letters of the words nature and park are all capitalized. The nature park is a specific park because there are so many parks in the world. And since we need to identify which park, so we give the name nature park. Next, she left her phone at the hotel. Here, in this example, you might be wondering why we use at when in fact we are using the word hotel. We know for sure that hotel is a general word. There are so many hotels in the world. That is correct. But notice the definite article the. The definite article the is used to indicate that the noun it modifies is known to the listener. So, in this sentence, we can assume that the hotel name is known to the person talked to or to whoever is listening to the speaker. Next, by, near, and close to. These prepositions express the same meaning, so they are grouped under one category. By, near, and close to describe things that are at a small distance meaning they are not too far. For example, the public market is by, near, or close to the Pacific Mall. It doesn't matter whichever of the three we are using. Anyway, they express the same meaning. 
The sentence means that the public market is not too far from the Pacific Mall. The same goes with example number two. Please drop me at the restaurant by, near, or close to the bookstore. Next, between. Between describes an object that is in the middle of two things. For example, Mike stood between Carrie and Ice. Another example, that orange bag between the two black ones is exceptional. Next, behind. Behind describes an object that is placed at the back of something. For example, my car is behind that black car. Jimmy is standing behind Oliver. Next, next to and beside. These propositions describe an object that has little to no distance from something else. For example, I have a small drawer beside or next to my bed, meaning the drawer is very, very close to my bed. It's just next to my bed. There is little to no distance at all. Next, Mandy sat beside or next to Rich, meaning Mandy was very close to Rich because she sat beside or next to him. Next, below and under. These prepositions describe something lower than something. For example, the cat is sitting below or under the table. I think I left my pen below or under the computer. Next, above and over. These prepositions describe something higher than the other thing. Compared to the preposition of place on, above and over are used for things that are over something else. There is little distance compared to on that the object is perfectly touching the surface of something. For example, the butterfly flew above or over us. The airplane passed over or above that tall building. Next, in front of. In front of describes something situated before something. For example, she sat in front of me. Smile in front of the camera.